More now on our top story. Different approaches to COVID-19 have been laid bare in the region as Omicron runs rampant. For more, we have Professor Dale Fisher from the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the World Health Organization with us. Professor Fisher, help us understand why countries have all these different approaches to tackling COVID-19 at this time. Yeah, hi, Dawn. Uh, this is why governments uh, run outbreaks, actually. It, it, the science is one thing, but it all has to be contextualised. And that's why WHO doesn't tell countries what to do, because there's always a balance. And, and the balance in this case is between the, the social, the economic and the, and the health impacts. And what matters to one country's population will be quite different to another country. So you've just heard uh, the Australian High Commissioner, uh, Mr Hodgman, talking about... Um, you know, the economic importance of getting the borders open. And, and we know this, the social importance because many people have been stranded. So th this was very important to Australia. It was very important to Singapore as well. We're uh, uh, a small island and it's difficult being independent. So whereas China obviously feels that the health impacts are, are something that they they don't want to take on, but they can manage the, the social and, and economic side of things. So so, so, so this is uh, why there are different strategies that, that emerge. Professor Fisher, uh, maybe I, I'll, I'll re-ask that question in a slightly more specific way. So, for example, Australia is saying, uh, the Prime Minister is saying he's lifting borders based on new medical advice. And China yesterday is saying a dynamic zero infection strategy is the scientific option for Hong Kong. As a man of science, uh, leaving aside politics or social concerns or livelihood concerns, is there a way to say science leads necessarily to one approach as opposed to another approach? Uh, I'm going to give you a, a, a pretty much the same answer way, Sue. Um, the, uh, the health systems are different. Uh, Australia obviously has confidence in its health systems and they're monitoring the the, the high, uh, uh, the severe cases, the, the ICU cases. Um, so, so, so these are the types of, uh, of reasons that, that one country would, would be different. The vaccination rates, uh, I believe, are higher in, in Australia and also they used a different vaccine and we know the, 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 the locally made vaccines in China um, aren't as effective as the mRNA vaccines. So... So they do have a different set of circumstances that they need to apply the science to. And, and as well as that, what matters to society? And they're saying that, uh, that they really can't uh, look their, their community in the eye and say, we're, we're going to open up. But I, I must say, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed by the binary view. I, either you stay shut down and go for zero or you open up uh, and let it run, run riot. They, they talked about two million uh, potential deaths. Um, th that was modelling against countries that had used, well, Chile, England, whether it was uh, the, the Chinese vaccine or Pfizer. Um, but, but those countries were getting overwhelmed with the number of cases because they'd removed all restrictions. And, and the Singapore approach um, has never really been zero. It's keep, keep the restrictions there and the numbers will never go up. And we had many zero days, but uh, but by the same token, we didn't uh, we didn't have to have sort of huge lockdowns, um, mass testing to to drive it back to zero because we had faith that our our mid middle of the road measures uh, would hold us in good stead. And until of course we changed strategy in August. Uh, and Professor Fisher, on the point of zero COVID, you mentioned earlier that there are some countries, notably China, of course, who are still fervently going a zero COVID strategy. Do you believe that that strategy is still relevant for China and will remain relevant in the near term? So I hear they're, they're, they're rolling out an mRNA vaccine and, and hopefully a better vaccine will reduce transmission. Uh, I, I don't see why a different mRNA vaccine is going to have a different outcome. The, the, the Pfizer and Moderna uh, outcomes are, are very similar. Um, it, if it's about a better vaccine to stop transmission, then they're really going to be waiting for the, the, the nasal, the, the inhalational vaccines, which uh, can mount a, an IgA response, and, and that's going to be better at stopping transmission, if they work, but they're still in trial, of course. So... Um, 
I, I actually have have worries about the, the the Chinese strategy of just staying at zero because we know whether it's hamsters importing into Hong Kong or whether it's fresh and frozen food going into markets in China or tourists taking it in, it keeps it keeps going in. It's very difficult to to stay at zero, and and as I say, the social and economic impact and the and the the efforts to keep it at zero are. Are huge, uh, and if the plan is to wait for an anti for a, a vaccine that doesn't exist yet, then who knows how long that could be. Oh, thanks for that, Professor Dale Fisher from the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the World Health Organization.